we began on what I was calling us in the face of uncertainty. That was our subtopic last Sunday. In the face of uncertainty, when things don't seem to appear the way you wanted them to appear. Especially in the year 2024, when you look at everything, you're wondering, will I really make it? And I want to let you know you will make it. That's the promise of God for you. So let's look at Joshua chapter 1 and verse 2. 1 and verse 2. And this is what the Bible says in Joshua 1. If you don't have your, the, the, uh, the Bible with you, you can read with us on the, on the screen. It says, Moses, my servant, is dead. That was God speaking to Joshua after the death of Moses. But we agreed last Sunday, we'll not say Moses, my servant, is dead. We'll say what? The year 2023 is over. That's the expectations of that year, they are over. Now we are looking for a new year. Now, the, the year 2023 is over. Then we'll go. Let's go together. Now, therefore, arise. Can you read with me? Can we start again? Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all these people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. That's the word the Lord gave to Joshua. And that's the word the Lord is giving to you and to us. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful for this beautiful morning, wonderful morning, wonderful people that are here wonderful fellowship that we are having, the praises which have gone to you, the songs that we have sung, the warmth of being together in this beautiful day, the new year 2024, the new month of January. We are so happy that we could find ourselves in this new year, and we are here to say thank you. As we sit for the next few minutes, Lord, to hear the word you have for us as a church and as individuals, may you minister to us, and Father, may you bless us. We are so grateful that you've kept us until this time. And we are also happy that you have a hope and a future for us. We thank you for the words that we have, we have read from the scripture. Master, help us to understand them and just reveal them to us as they may apply to us in this time and in this season in our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray and we believe. And together we say, amen, and be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. So these words, as I said, were given to Joshua at the death of of Moses. And uh, for the sake of those who are here for the first time, Moses was a man who had been with Israel for 40 years. I'm imagining this is a man whom, whom the, the, the Israelites believed in. They have never known any other leader. They have only known this man. Because the scripture tells me he's the one who delivered them from Egypt. And for close to 40 years, they have now been with Moses. And they are just about to enter the land of Canaan. About to enter. Actually, they have, they have reached the river Jordan. They, that, that, when they stand on this end, you are seeing the promise, which you began looking forward to for the last 40 years. And then suddenly, Moses is dead. I'm trying to imagine what was in the minds of the Israelites. I'm just trying to do this recap for the sake of those who are not here. These young people who had been born in the wilderness, most of them were under 40. A few of them were above 40 because the rest who left Egypt with Moses, they had all died in the wilderness. They have not known any leader. They have just known this man, Moses, to be their leader. And their aspirations, their hopes, their future was in Moses taking them across the river Jordan into this blessed promise that God had given to them. And then suddenly things just turn around and Moses is dead. All right? The hopes they had. The things they expected, they seem now to be shattered. Just the way many of us may look back into our lives and the things which we were hoping for. The year has closed and we have not seen them. Then suddenly uncertainty comes in. I'm, I'm using the word uncertainty here very briefly to let you know they, 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 could not, they could not understand how they were going to enter the land of Canaan without Moses. Because there are only two men who are with, with them now, who are with them from the beginning. There is Joshua and there is Caleb. And among the two men, Joshua was simply Moses' servant. He was not a leader in any form. Apart from one time when he led the war, when he led the war, in the initial years when they had left Egypt, when the sons of uh, Amalek attacked them. And now Joshua volunteered to be a servant of Moses. He's the man who is carrying the bag of Moses, the man who is carrying his water, the man who, who goes with him carrying his rod and is carrying a horn. And whenever Moses is going on the hill to pray where he would be for even 40 days, this man is with Moses. The Bible tells me when Moses would come down and enter the camp, Joshua would not leave. He would not leave the tent. So he was not as famous as many of us may imagine. 
Israel had leaders, he had, they, had, uh, they had elders, they also had leaders of the different tribes, they had captains of different ranks, but now Moses is dead. Who is going to take us over to the land which God is giving us? To me, there was a cloud of uncertainty. Just like many of us, we may look at our lives and we begin to wonder, who actually will lead me into my promise? That's where we left last Sunday. And we realize God now appoints this young man called Joshua, and he tells Joshua, you are the man to take Israel to the land which I'm taking to them. The question was, what was the feelings of Joshua and the feelings of Israel? This is why the book of Joshua chapter 1 is written. It's not written just as a, another way of giving us a story. Actually, Israel was in a state of uncertainty. They were not sure whether this man Joshua, whom God had given to them, would do what Moses actually was doing or what Moses had promised them. And even they themselves were afraid. They were now very, very fearful because they are going into a land where they must take that land by force. The land had inhabitants, like I said last Sunday. The land wasn't just, it was not just a walk in. You would just walk in and take. They were to get that land through battle, fighting the war. This is why you can see our, 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 our mascot on this, on this logo, I mean on this, on this theme. We are put there as a shield and we are put swords. To signify that you don't conquer without war. I want to let you know this. The year 2024 is a good year. We have declared it. But you, you will not just walk in, my friend. You will walk in through battle. In other words, you must arm yourself from the beginning of the year to fight any kind of war that you're going to face in the days to come. But the promise God is giving you is guaranteeing you, you will conquer. I think that's the good news that we have. So we saw last Sunday how Israel was, and in the midst of that, the Bible tells me, God tells Joshua, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, into the land which I am giving to you. So what did God do? The Lord decided to use chapter 1 of Joshua, verse 3, not verse 2 now, verse 3, to help them understand what verse 2 was. He tried to use verse 3 to verse 9 to encourage them and to give them the confidence, to prepare them. Because there is no way they were just going to walk into that land without God giving them an assurance. And God helping them to know they will make it, even without, uh, without Moses. There was no way they were going to enter into that land without that feeling that God is with us. And may I speak to us, even us as we sit here this morning, I want to give you hope that 2024, the Lord is going to be with you. In 2024, God is giving you a promise you will make it. You are not going to be in the same snare that you are in in these past years. Maybe the things you are expecting God for in 2023 never happened. There is a possibility the aspirations you had for this, the, the past year, they never took place. There is the possibility you are just at the brick of getting your miracle, then things turned around. But I want you to know if you believe what God says, and if you believe what the word of God says, and if you trust in what God has spoken to us, and as we, we believe in the theme God has given to us, 2024 will be a blessed year. So let's look together, let's go together to Joshua chapter 1, verse 3 to verse 9, and we see a little bit, just a recap, on what God prepared Israel for. And then this morning, I will be talking to you about four things that you must be, or you must do, for you to conquer. Especially 2024. Four things that you must arm yourself with. Four things that you must believe in. For you to make sure that 2024, you conquer. Do you have that faith to conquer 2024? Amen. Let's, let's look at Joshua chapter, three, chapter 1, verse, verse 3 to verse 9. We read that together. These are the words God gave Joshua to encourage Israel and to prepare Israel for now what would become the battle of all battles. What would now become an invasion where they were to invade the land and take that land by force. So he told Joshua, and please receive this as the word for you. I told people in the in first service, when you personalize things in your life, they become yours. But if you don't, if you just see another someone pastor was delivering or something for somebody else, you'll never get it. So he says, he tells Joshua, and please read with me, he says, every place that the sole of your foot will trend upon, I have given to you, just as I promised Moses. So the promise was every place where the sole of your foot shall step. It means from today forward, as you go, I will be with you. Then in verse 4, he went further, he says, from the wilderness of this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, the land of the Hattites, to the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. The first thing that God did was to assure them and to give them a picture of the territory that he was giving them. Which means God has a future for us. He was telling them, look, you can only go as far as your feet can go. 
And I want to speak to you this year, telling you, your limit is as far as your feet can go. Yeah, God gives you the big picture. But it's upon you now to walk into it and begin trusting God into it. The word arise was to tell them, look, you have a territory. God always gives you a jurisdiction to show you how far you can be able to go. And the father that God could tell them was as far as the going down of the sun. It means the horizon. When you wake up in the morning, you see the sun coming up. And in the evening, you see where the sun is going. As much as you can drive where the sun is going and meet the sun, that's the far that you can be able to go. But I know many of us never catch the, you can never catch the sun. As you keep driving, the sun is running away from you. <laughs> in the Bible, you realize, later on in the book of Deuteronomy, you will see God defining the territories of Israel. Okay? Because he understood Israel couldn't take the whole world. He knew there, were, there was a limit. But the limit wasn't basically what he had apportioned them. The limit was as far as you can go. To me, that tells me there are things which God knows Mlema can handle, I can handle. There are blessings which are just exclusively for me. But that doesn't limit me to the blessings which are mine. I think I can take beyond my blessing. And I want to trust you to take beyond your blessing. Amen. Some people are saying amen, others are not. Amen. Can, I say, can I hear amen from you? Amen. Can you trust God to go beyond your blessing? Amen. So what God is telling, he told them, the first thing he did was to tell them, give them the scope of where their feet can reach. And in 2024, the scope of where your feet can reach will depend on you. In that business which you are doing, in the family, in your personal life, in the church life, in your workplace, if you trust God and believe God this year and begin to walk into it, I'm, I'm promising you, it will go as far as you can walk into it. So don't, don't put yourself in a state where you cannot trust God for anything in this life. Or trust God for anything in the year 2024. Let me move on. Because I want to talk about my, 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 my four things. Number two, what God was to do, he affirmed Joshua as the leader. He had to affirm to them because they were uncertain about Joshua. In fact, even Joshua himself wasn't sure that he would make it. I gave an example here last Sunday and I expressed to you. I just told you he was a man who was picked out of what we call as obscurity. He was not the man in the limelight whom everybody would have expected him to be the next leader. But God picks him and brings him out and he tells him now take the mantle and move on. To signify to us that you don't need to be visible. God can still use you even when nobody's noticing you. You may not, have, you may not even be known. Believe me, you may, you may feel inadequate in, any, in, in, many, in many ways. In that business space that you are occupying. Somebody may not understand that you can conquer in that business. But I'm telling you when the hand of God is upon you, there is nothing that will stop you. So God wanted to affirm Israel that this man Joshua is the man. You have had your Moses, Moses is dead. But I can, I'm telling you, this new man whom I have appointed, he will take you. No wonder in chapter 3, if we can go there quickly, chapter 3 of the same Joshua, chapter 3 and verse 7, the Lord told Joshua, today I will affirm you. I will affirm you. Look at chapter three, Joshua chapter 3 and verse 7. See what the Bible says. And the Lord said to Joshua, this is now the first the first miracle that Joshua is going to do. He has never done any miracle. He has never spoken and told the people the Lord has said. He has simply been in the background of Moses. Simply span, a spanner boy for Moses. Now God is telling Israel, I want now you to know that this is the man whom I have picked. And look at verse 7, chapter 3. It says, the Lord said to Joshua, please read with me what the Lord said. He said, today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Can you put it in King James? I love it, I love, I love it in King James. King James uses the word there, exalt. The word, he says, I will begin to magnify you. Magnify. How many know the, uh, um, what a mag, magnify? Is it mag, uh, mag, magnify? Eh? To do what? To make big, eh? you, you are macroscope, eh? You, 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 you use a microscope to make big. Like me, when you look at my face, you only see my face. If, you use a, if God wants to magnify me, you live and see my veins here and see how my face looks like. So he says, you've been in obscurity, but today I'm going to begin magnifying you until everybody sees you. Then he says that they may know, I love the word there, as I was with who? Saying, listen, there is a backing behind you. I want you to know, in the, he was using the name of Moses to give these people an assurance that this new leader 
will do what Moses had done. And listen to me, we are not without the name. The word name here means by the authority of. This is why believers, we use the name of Jesus. Jesus said, in my name, you shall. There is a backing behind us. God uses a name. He uses an authority. So he wanted to show them the authority I had with Moses. I have taken that authority and I have given it to Joshua. So that these people will see, they will know that as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. And if you go into the story of chapter 3 and read that story, you will realize immediately this man did it. The Bible says, and people believed him throughout his life. Number three, the third thing, God wanted to encourage them to accomplish his mission. There was a mission which these people wanted to, to, to go on. And God wanted to, just to, to give them that encouragement. This is why in this chapter that we have read, the Bible uses the, 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 word, the word be strong and of good courage. It's used so many times. Because God was telling Israel, as much as you feel uncertain, you are not too sure about the future. But if you become strong and you, can, and you believe me, you will make it. And the strength wasn't in anything. I've talked about the name of Jesus. Much more than that was in the power that God was bestowing upon Joshua. By the way, we'll be looking at it much later. The power of the Holy Ghost. Before Moses died, he laid his hands on Joshua. And the Bible tells me he transferred what he had and put it in Joshua. This reminds me the disciples of Jesus before Jesus went to heaven. Just before he died, he began telling them, I will leave you. I will go. One of these days you will never see me. And the Bible tells me they were very worried. They were very, very uncertain about the future. Then Jesus made a statement. He said, it is good that I go. Because if I go to my father, I'll ask him. And he will send you another comforter. And who is that comforter? The Holy Spirit. Since when he comes on you, you will be able to do things which I have not even done. You greater works than I did will you be able to do. To tell me this, that when God also appoints you or affirms you, God will never give you, will never leave you without power. That power of the Holy Spirit. Number four, God wanted to guarantee them success. And he told them, you will be successful. You will be successful. He, said, he told them, if you keep my law, you keep my word. Everything you do, you will be successful. God spoke to them and he told them, you will go wherever you are going and you will be, he spoke two things, you will be prosperous and you will make good success. Good success. And can I promise you, 2024 is a year of our prosperity yeah. and a year of our good success. Things that we believed God for. You, you watch my space. 2024, I'm going to be successful. Yeah. And it's not just successful, good success. You know, there are people who, who have bad success. They have looted, they have stolen, they have bribed. That good success never lives for long. I mean, bad success. But we want to stand in good success. When people ask us, how did you make it? We say, the Lord. And we can point them to the cross and tell them, if it was not God who did this for me, I would have never been where I am. And then the last thing which he wanted to affirm them in that portion of scripture, the last thing was to reaffirm his presence. His presence. We poake. To tell them, listen, I will be with you wherever you go. You don't need to worry, I'm behind you. And let me tell you, nothing makes you as happy as when you know God is with you. In whatever you did, you do. Joseph succeeded, became prosperous. The Bible says God was with him. If you look at men like Daniel, they became prosperous because God was with them. You look at a man like David in the scripture. David was very prosperous because God was with him. Joseph was, I mean, my, Solomon was very prosperous in his early years because God was with him. Samson, God was with him. So nothing really excites you than when you know God is with you. So the Lord told them, I will be with you. Which takes me now to the last scripture Jesus gave the disciples. Because we can never read this, 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 this portion of scripture out of context. We can only understand it if we apply it in our situation. For me, the sum of all this was God commissioning Joshua and Israel for the task that was the real task of their departure from Egypt. All these days in the wilderness, they were preparing to enter the land. And believe me, the church today, if there is anything that Jesus did, all what he did on the cross and all his miracles were to prepare us for the task of eternity, which we are now involved in. And this leaves you with nothing but look at Matthew 28 and verse 19 from 18. To 20. Let's look at that. Then I talk about four things very quickly. I think I have the time for those four things. I think I do. Yes. 
Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to verse 20. The same thing that God spoke to Joshua are the same things that Jesus is now speaking to you and I and to his disciples at his commissioning. What we normally call in the Bible, the Great Commission. And I'm happy to let you know as we explore this theme, advancing for conquest, we are simply exploring what the Lord has for us in 2024. As it was for Joshua, so it is for us. To me, I see Jesus. I can see the Lord Jesus during his season, like Moses. And I'm seeing Joshua as the Holy Spirit. I'm just making a type. Jesus Christ has finished his mission and is now commanding the church now go over. And they cannot go over without the power of the Holy Ghost. And he's telling them, wherever you go, I will be with you. But there are certain things you must do. If you do these things, I will be with you. And you'll be prosperous. Look at that portion of scripture. It says in verse 18, and by the way, the Great Commission doesn't start from verse 19. The Great Commission starts from verse 18. That is the verse the devil never wants people to, to know. So Jesus stands and he tells them. And he came and said to them. Can you read with me? What did he say? All authority in heaven... And on earth has been given to me. That's the first thing. I am, I am, I have the power. Although I'll be going to heaven, I have the power. All authority has been given to me. Then he went to verse 19 to say, he said, Go ye, arise, go. Go ye into the whole world. Go ye and go ye and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, in the name of the Father. That's by the authority of my Father. Then in verse 20, he says, verse 20, teaching them to observe what? To observe what? I want to hear that. To observe what? All things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then he says, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Can we now explore this portion of scripture together with Joshua chapter 1 verse 3 to 9 and look at it in four things that we must do or what Joshua commanded Israel to become for them to conquer the land which they were going to. God bless every one of us. Number one, four things, number one. Very quickly, number one. The four, the four things are this, in this commission. In this commission. Number one is begin to commence. In other words, arise and move. If you are going to make it in 2024, you will not do it by sitting and doing nothing. I want you to preach to your neighbor. Sometimes preaching is good. Help the pastor here. Tell, look, but don't harass your neighbor. You don't know what he has gone through this week, all right? Just look at your neighbor, give him a smile first. And tell him, arise. Tell him, move. Repeat again, arise. arise. And do what? Move. Thank you for preaching for me. Now, listen. The first thing that God told Israel was to commence. To commence. And this is what Jesus told the disciples when he told them, go ye. Commence. I want to, I want to ask my, 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 my people up there to go to, to go to the four things. Four things. All right? They're there. The four things. Not those ones, the four things that I'm talking about. Arise, commence, commence. All right? Commence, because I want, to, I want, I want people to follow what is, um, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching here. All right? Now, he told them, go ye. That was the first thing. Go ye into the whole world. So the word commence here, when I use the word commence, it simply it means to arise and to move. This is to bring into activity or into operation. Israelites, they were on the brink of the river, on the other side of the river, and they are wondering, how will we make it on the other side? Your, Moses is dead. Can you imagine your leader is gone? This is the man you trusted. Can we really go? God is telling them, arise. In other words, don't lose hope. In other words, you must take action. And I want to say to us, we must take action. 2024 is a year of doing what? Taking action, arising, arising, moving, taking a move. They could not take the land without taking an action. And the Bible commanded, the command was, every place your foot shall trend upon. I've mentioned that. Wherever your foot shall be, that's the place I'm giving to you. It means as far as you can go, that's the far God will take you. If you do not begin walking into that career, you will never get anywhere. You will be admiring it from a distance. 
If you cannot begin walking towards that business which you are trusting God for, you will never do anything. Your spiritual life, if you don't, text, if you don't begin acting towards it, nothing will happen in your spiritual life. In your family, in whatever vocation God is calling you to, you must begin to make a move. Begin to commence. God was looking at them and he was saying, rise from where you are and begin to take, take action. The people of Israel were to, move, to take action to the place that God had promised them. Remember, he had given them boundaries, like I said, when I was doing this introduction. And the boundaries were actually limited to how far they can be able to go. Pastor Joyce, when we'll be exploring this theme, you'll realize some places Israel never reached. In fact, the book of Judges will tell you, and the book of Numbers, it will tell you that many of them never did what they needed to do. There are just a few who managed to get where they wanted to get. And may I speak and tell you, don't be among those who will not make it to where God wants you to make it. May the Lord give us the grace to be like Caleb. The man who would stand and look at the mountain and he would say, this mountain was given to me 40 years. Give me my mountain. And he would take the sons of Anak and destroy them because he believed in what God had told Joshua. So the first step is arise and move. Arise and move. Now think of anything that you desire. Decide to arise and move towards it. The limits God, God gave Israel was to, as to the going down of the sun. Israel had more to take than what they took. And that also applies to you. Your blessing is tied, and I like this. Your blessing is actually tied in how far you are willing to go. I was exhorting the first church here, I said. Let this year do not allow yourself to sit and do nothing. Believe me. God has many things for you. Many things for you. Many things for you. You know, Tuesday we have, Bible, we have prayer meetings here. Let me tell you, the kingdom of God is not taken on a silver platter. It can't work that way. The, by, Jesus told them, he says, since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers what? How many know that scripture? It suffers? And he says, and who takes it? And how do the violent, how do they take it? By force. By force. Joshua was to do it by force. Last Sunday I explained, the land had inhabitants. And they were not small men, they were giants. Some of them were some of the toughest people you can ever imagine. When I talk about a giant, some people may think a giant is simply a man of eight or, 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 or nine feet. No. Let me describe a giant. Look at me, everyone. Just look at me. This is Pastor Mlema. How, how, how tall am I? About six, eight, isn't it? For, I mean, five, eight. Five, eight. Now imagine another me put on me. Take another me and put on me. How far will I be? And then you take another half of me and put on me. I want you to imagine that. That's how far I will be. If I'm standing here, maybe this can help you. If you put another me on me, I may go at least just a little lower than this, where the lights are. Then you add another half of me on me, I will exceed the lights. Now you imagine on Sunday morning, you are all seated here, and uh, you say our pastor is coming to, to preach. Then you see me emerge, I don't know from which door. You see a whole of me coming, and you know, I'm pro the proportion of my height is also proportional to my weight. I'm arriving here with a microphone with a Bible. How many of you will continue sitting here? I I'm sure some of you will find a way where there is no way. Isn't it? That is how those giants were. That was the height of the giants. So it was not an easy thing. Do not imagine when David was facing Goliath, it was just a simple thing. The Bible tells me whenever Goliath just moved, the whole of the army of Israel retreated in, in, in fear. Because it was a, a huge person, a something of a person. But look at David. David is appearing, carrying a sling. And even as he's carrying, he's not actually carrying it from a distance. He's approaching Goliath and he's telling Goliath, who are you defying the armies of God? David was the man that I'm going to talk about in the next portion. Now listen to me. The first thing that you must do, arise. Don't be afraid of the circumstance. Don't be afraid of the situation. You didn't hear me. Don't be afraid of the issues that are happening in your life. Arise. Then number two, second thing. You can write this down. Number two, you must be unstoppable. Can someone say unstoppable? You must be unstoppable. And the word God told Joshua was this. He said, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. There shall be no, there shall, can I quote it properly? There shall not be 
any man able to stand before thee, not one day, but all the days of your life. It means this, nothing can stand in your way of progress. Maybe last year, some boss or some character came into your way of your progress. Maybe some demon. There's a possibility somebody went to a witch to stand in your way of your progress. There is a possibility situations came in your life that were so tough that, that you could not progress the next level of your blessing. But can I speak and tell you, this coming year, no man shall be able to stand you. No one will stop you in advancing in your course. No external, external force or obstacle that have, uh, that have the ability to prevent you from achieving your goals. God will give you the ability for you to be able to move on and make sure that you get to the place where God wants you to be. Now listen, think of things that, you've tried, that have tried to obstruct you in your progress. And let it be known that in the year 2024, the year will be a year, and I'm calling it a year of limitless. Limitless, listen, limitless victory. Limitless victory. There's not, there's not going to be any limit the victory God is going to give to you. It's going to be a year of limitless victory. You know, Israel wasn't just going to walk into the land that God was giving them. The first thing which Israel was to confront was the River Jordan. And the River Jordan, if you read in chapter 3, it was flooded by the time when they were reaching there. It was not, there, it was not dry, it was flooded. Just this week we've had a few floods in Nairobi. Not even floods, actually it's just water. A little water. You people don't know a flood, you don't know. A little water. This man, the, the river was flooded. That was the first thing. And the second thing were the tall walls of Jericho. The city was built with ba tall buckets. You could not cross through into the other side of the city. But still God had to use Joshua to ensure that they cross the river and they also cross, they break the walls of Jericho. To signify to me, there is nothing in your life that will stop you from reaching where God wants you to go. As we advance to conquer, as we advance in conquest, believe me, God will give you the ability to withstand any pressure that comes in your life. Any kind of situation that tries to stop you from reaching where God wants you to go, God will make you unstoppable. Amen. I gave an example. I said an, an, an unstoppable person is like a, a roller, a big, a huge roller that you, you put on top of a hill. When it is sitting on the hill, it has no effect. But the moment you just tip it a bit, that thing will go down the hill without anything stopping it. If you want to try, take your car on a hill and then tip it. Then come and tell us the experience. I'm telling you, you won't even be there to tell the experience. That's what we're going to do to the devil. As we are moving down, the Lord will be with us. And there is nothing that will stand in the way of our progress. God will give us every victory that we need in our lives so that we can be able to fulfill that which he promised our fathers. Now, there is a quote which I want to give to you here. And this quote, I found it somewhere. And please, take this quote as your quote for the day. The quote says this. And read with me. It says this. No obstacle is too big for me to overcome. I, do you believe that? If you do, lift up your hand and say that. Say, I believe. Now, no obstacle is too big for me to overcome. As I am, how are you? You are what? Unstoppable in my pursuits for greatness. I am on a mission, and nothing and no one can deter me from reaching my goals. This year, nobody will stop you. There is no devil, there is no demon. Please preach to your neighbor. Just turn to him and give him a smile. Tell him, I can assure you that, that this year will be different. Caution him. Tell him, don't try. And shake your head. To, to stop me. From any way. I know that neighbor won't stop you, but there are some fellows who will be waiting for you out there. So deal with them. Now, number three, before I finish with the fourth one, I have a few minutes here to go. Number three, the Lord wants you to be indomitable. I know you may not know this word very clearly. Indomitable. Can, some, can somebody say indomitable? What does it mean? The word indomitable means being what? Strong. And being what? Brave. And being what? Impossible to defeat or make frightened. That's why the Bible uses the word, be strong and of good courage. This word, most God repeated it to Joshua three times in these scriptures. Be strong and of good courage. And I've just given you an example of David. David wasn't just 
a man who was actually, who believed in God, no. David was a man who was indomitable. Indomitable. David didn't believe anything can be able to defeat him or make him frightened. Or make him frightened. You know, there are things in life that come on your way. And you look at them, yes, you have faith. But when you look at them inside of you, you feel frightened. Am I right? But listen, when you are indomitable, you reach a position where you say it doesn't matter your height. It doesn't matter your size. It doesn't matter the things that you have in your hands. I believe in myself and I know I can make it. You know, listen, our success doesn't depend on the things that you yourself, probably others, tell you you must have. Saul, when David was speaking to him, Saul gave David a shield and he gave David a sword. David tried to put them on. He realized those things cannot be able to help him. And he said, listen, some come with swords and shields, but I come in the name. So there is some force in us. There is something within me that everybody else does not have. And this is why I believe that when God makes you indomitable, you will not be the you physical that people are seeing. It will be a you that is different from what people are seeing. That's why people keep asking, how did you make it? And you simply say, it's the Lord who gave me the ability to do it. Because in your own strength, you can do nothing. The disciples of Jesus, believe me, the disciples of Jesus. These were the same, same fellows who had, to, who had actually denied him. I'm looking at Peter. This Peter man has been with Jesus for three and a half years. And at the brick of the Lord dying on the cross, a small little girl, the Bible calls him a maid. I'm not under, under, underrating maid. Because they, they were trying to show us how, you know, being, uh, failing to be that can do to you. This small girl who has no name, whom nobody even has recognized, looks at Peter and he says, hey, you, I saw you with him. I saw you with him. And how does Peter behave? You will see Peter running away and saying, ah, ah, this man, I don't know him. I do not know him. I've never been with him. I don't, I'm. then Peter retreated and he went fishing. But I want you to imagine, Peter has now arrived. Jesus has, has resurrected. Peter, Jesus has gone to heaven and he has sent the power that makes you, help me here, makes you what? Indomitable. He has sent the power that makes you indomitable. Because this power does not depend on your qualifications. It doesn't depend on your career. It doesn't depend on how smart you are. Believe me, this power comes in you. And it lives in you. And it makes you different from anybody else. Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost, believe me, full of the Holy Ghost, looking in the eyes of those who had crucified Jesus. Now Peter is not the same Peter. Peter is indomitable. Indo Help me here. Indomitable. And he says, you crucified him, you. He says, repent. Because the man is different. The man is strong. The man is brave. The man cannot defeat, cannot accept defeat. The man is not frightened. To a point where even when they picked him and put him in prison and they told him you should stop saying what you are saying. Peter says, can we obey God or obey you? And by the power of God, God delivered Peter from prison. And I can tell you, friend, when you are indomitable, there is no spirit that will hold you back. You will move into your possession. You will move into your inheritance. You will move into your future. You will move into your career. You will move into your marriage. You will move into your family without anything stopping or standing in your way. So you must be indomitable. Listen to me. You must be indomitable. Listen, Jesus promised us what makes us indomitable. And we'll be talking about it in our next sermons. He said in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Let's read that one. Then I finish with the last one. And we are done. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. This is what Jesus said. And I want you to read with me. Acts 1. In verse 8, he said this when he was talking to his disciples. Fearful men, they are not sure about the future. They are looking at the future, it is bleak. Even some have come to him and they are saying, Lord, is this the time for you to restore back the kingdom to us? Because the Lord died and resurrected. Now they think he has now come to establish an earthly kingdom. Jesus tells them, uh-uh, see you evil, ninaenda. But he said, but you will do what? Help me here. Please read with me, you will receive what? You will receive what? I want to hear the word power properly. You receive what? How? When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Then you will be what? My witnesses? Where? Jerusalem and where? Judea and where? And where? As far as your eye can see. Now, there is a power that works in the life of a believer. And that's the power of the Holy Ghost. Pastor, Pastor uh, Joyce, this year, all of us must be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. 
How many believe in the Holy Ghost? Now, we are going to conquer. Not in our own power. The Bible says not by might. Not by power. But by what? By his spirit. We will do it. Number four. And the last one. And this is the last one. Number four. Four minutes. Number four. You must believe and you must be prosperous and have good success. Prosperous and have good success. That's what the Lord assured Israel. He told them, look, apart from you arising and going, apart from you becoming unstoppable, apart from you becoming indomitable, you will be prosperous and you will have good success. And I'll end by telling you this. It doesn't come because of your abilities. Prosperity, good success doesn't come because you are learned, you are educated. No, it doesn't come like that. It does not come because you, are, you come to church just on Sunday. And you are also a very good tither. You give money and you love the Lord. Just like that. It comes because there is something which God has promised you in his word. There is something about prosperity. There is something about success which you can only get from nobody but from God. And I want to repeat myself here. And this thing is found in what God has said. What God has said. If you look at the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 28, he says, teaching them to observe. To observe what? All things that I have commanded you. Teaching them to observe. Your success will come when you observe everything that is written where? In the Bible. In the Bible. When you take God serious, listen, 2024, if the word of God will be your anchor, you know, we don't want to promise people things which they don't have. Believe me. Your success won't come by me saying, receive it. And you saying, I receive. It's not like that. It will not come because somebody has slain you. I know pastors who have used this gimmick to, make, to tell people. But let me tell you, your success comes because you believe the word of God and you practice what the word of God says. I'd rather give you the word than give you an emotional or, or, or just make you happy. Joshua's success and prosperity was pegged on the word. And you'll find this in Joshua 1, verse 8. Verse 8. And God re re repeated it, verse 7, verse 8, and he ended in verse 9. Emphasized that Joshua, listen, I have something which I have given to Moses. And this thing, I'm giving it to you to give them. And that's what Jesus did three and a half years. He was giving it to the disciples. Then he said, and this thing, give them. As you preach the gospel, give them. Verse 8, he said, and I want us to read that together as we conclude. Please read with me. He said what? Listen to me. What did he say? Let's read together. He said, this book of the law. What was that book of the law? The, the word of God. This book of the law shall not do what? Depart out of your mouth. Let's stop there for a moment. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. This is why I believe it was a commission, like just the great commission. The things which I have taught you, he's telling his disciples, the same teach all things to observe, to observe all things that I have commanded you. GCI, 2024, we are going to believe everything which the Lord has done what? Commanded us. Because that is the, the secret of our success. He went further to say, but thou shalt, help me there, thou shalt meditate therein, day and night, that you may do what? Thou mayest observe to do, help me, to do, help me, to do. Help me to do what? According to what? According to some? Uh, according to some, eh? You will choose what to do when you come to church, isn't it? You will choose what to believe when you come to the house of God. You will choose the things which excite you when you read the Bible. But listen, it says, according to all that is written therein. It is on the basis of that. On the basis of that, tell your friend, on the basis of that. Listen, it is on the basis of this word, which we are preaching here every Sunday. On the basis of trusting and believing the promises of God. The Bible says, on the basis of that, help me. For then, thou shall make your way prosperous. And then, thou shalt have good success. Believing the word of God. Walking in the word of God, trusting the word of God will make your ways prosperous. Come on, you will be walking in your prosperity. You will be walking in your success. 
And then you will make, he will make you. Then you will, you will have what we are calling here good success. That is my prayer for you in 2024. May the Lord make you prosperous. May the Lord make you successful. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. That in everything you do in this year, God will make you prosperous. And God will make you successful. In Jesus' name. I think I'm done. I've ended my sermon. I've ended it. We will now begin picking portions of the segments that I've mentioned. And exploring them as they apply to us in the theme of this year. Thank you for listening to me. I trust you are blessed. And if you are, stand up on your feet and let us close with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord.